Want to know something crazy? Through 66 games this season, Nikola Jokic has dunked the basketball a whopping 12 times. In those same 66 games, he's dropped 21 triple doubles, meaning he's nearly twice as likely to record a triple double than he is to dunk the ball. I can't believe I'm about to make this comparison, but Jokic is like a minivan. Doesn't look the best, isn't the quickest, but can get the job done and carry a basketball team if needed. At a time where the league in the MVP race is the most loaded it's ever been, a man who can't jump over a shoebox is, ironically, playing at a level above everybody else. Jokic is currently ranked 13th in points per game, 4th in rebounds, and 4th in assists. These are incredible numbers, but as a center, this is historic. In NBA history, there have only been 5 big men that have ever averaged 25, 10, and 5 in a season. These are your jack of all trades type centers. They can score with finesse or physicality, rebound because they're huge, and see the court like very few bigs ever have. Nikola Jokic has managed to post three of these seasons, the most ever by a center. But what separates him from the rest is his otherworldly efficiency. If we were to keep this 25, 10, and 5 stat line and impose a minimum field goal percentage of 55%, our list would dwindle down to one individual, our minivan. In fact, in both of these all-around efficient seasons, Joker won the MVP. So what does that mean about what he's doing this year? Well, since you're asking, he's somehow been better. Since Jokic is averaging over 9 assists per game, he would become the first player in NBA history to average 25, 10, and 9 on 55% from the field. We have never seen an individual as versatile as Nikola Jokic, and the basic stats are just the beginning. These are the NBA's top 50 players in offensive win shares. And there's Jokic. Win shares per 48? That's Luke Cornett. I'm just playing, that's our boy. Here are the top 50 in overall win shares. That star at the top? That's the Joker. Offensive box plus minus? There's Jokic. Overall box plus minus? Nikola Jokic. The top 50 players in VORP, one of the most accurate advanced stats when it comes to measuring a player's value to their team, Jokic is first. For the fourth season in a row, this dude isn't only dominating nearly every basic statistical category, he's topping out in nearly every advanced metric as well. The unathletic minivan has a stranglehold on the NBA, and it extends much further than just the offensive end. Despite Jokic being labeled as a liability on defense, the numbers don't suggest that he is. Defensive win shares measures the number of wins contributed by a player due to their defense. Joker ranks second in the league. Now, you can argue that his number is inflated due to Denver's overall team defense and the players that he's sharing the court with. It would be a solid argument if the next closest Denver Nugget wasn't ranked outside of the top 35. Jokic's defensive game is extremely solid. In fact, he's also first in defensive box plus minus. Jokic can see and read plays before they happen, positioning himself in passing lanes or in the paint, and forcing opponents to rethink where they're going to drive and what pass they're going to make due to his sheer IQ. The man controls the court on offense and defense in a way that very few players ever have. Of the eight advanced statistical categories, Jokic is ranked in the top two of every single metric, and since these stats have been tracked, this has only happened seven times. The latest was our boy a couple years ago in his back-to-back -back MVP season. And then we got LeBron twice, the big ticket in 2004, David Robinson, Jordan in 88, and then Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in 1976 as the greatest statistical season ever recorded. You can make a serious argument that this year Nikola Jokic is having, numbers-wise, a top 8 season in league history. Should it be worthy of the MVP? Well, history tells us that it should. 
A hundred percent of the time. Of these eight anomalies, every single one of them was deemed the most valuable player in their respective season. Jokic is on track to snag his third MVP, and he's doing it in the most unique way possible. What if anything, Stephen A, can Miami do to win when Jokic is playing at that kind of level? Pray. We've become all too familiar with this dude's ability to throw up one-legged, catapult-like shots and hit nothing but net. It's ridiculous. I'm a Lakers fan. It sucks. His skill set is unconventional, and his playstyle also follows this unorthodox way of playing basketball. Joker leads the association with over 100 touches per game, 8 more than second place to Montes Sabonis. Want to know what makes this crazier? He's 37th in time of possession. The dude is literally doing way more with way less. To understand how insane this is, here's a board of the top 100 players in the NBA with the most touches per game. Players like Jalen Dern and Max Struess find themselves in this sphere simply because their team's offense doesn't run through them. Their guard this section is filled with guys who you might call ball hogs like Luca and Trey, who dominate entire possessions for their team. But a guy like Jalen Brunson isn't labeled as a ball hog, yet he finds himself right here. Double standard? Sabonis and Halliburton are outliers, incredible offensive weapons with limited time of possession. And then there's Nikola Jokic. Wait, did I forget to add him? Oh yeah, 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 get that title out of the way. There he is. Now, if we only kept players who are scoring over 25 points or dishing out 9 assists a night, it would look like this. Nikola Jokic is the ultimate offensive hub. The man is having an all-time statistical season while barely having the ball in his hands. The MVP might be a lock, but if for whatever reason you're against Jokic's case, I have a stat just for you. One of the greatest ways to measure a player's value to their team is to analyze how the team plays when their star player is on the court and when he's off the court. When Jokic is on the floor for the Denver Nuggets this season, they score over 10 points more than their opponents. But when he's off the court, they get outscored by nearly 9 points. That's over a 19 point difference. This is like an all time great mark. Because since on-off ratings began tracking, Jokic would rank 4th among all MVPs since 2008. A better mark than when he won the award in back-to-back -back seasons and only behind 3 of the greatest seasons we've ever seen by 2 top 10 players of all time. Now, the most valuable player isn't chosen upon what a player is doing relative to past MVPs, but rather what he's doing against his peers. So we're going to do just that. Here are the top 50 players in the NBA and the difference between their on-court and off-court net rating. <laughs> Jason Tatum surprisingly finds himself around the three-point mark, despite being the best player on the best team in the league. This is why his MVP case is in the garbage. Guys like Jared Allen, Tyrese Halliburton, and Jamal Murray greatly impact their team by a handful of points. Around the 12th point mark, you'll see other MVP candidates like Giannis and Shea, who bring immense value to their team. And the Clippers' big three has been elite when they're on the court this season. But it's nowhere near the impact that Nikola Jokic has had to the Nuggets. His score is so much greater than any other player that you might be questioning why there was even a conversation around the MVP in the first place. This may be one of the greatest individual seasons the NBA has ever seen. And barring another manic episode on live television, the minivan is a lock for his third MVP in just four years. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.